A few San Diego Unified families are getting a chance to fill in one of the gaps in many history textbooks. KPBS education reporter Kyla Calvert is here to tell us about a project to record the stories of local men who were among the country's first African American Marines. Kyla, these men are all known as the Monford Point Marines. Tell us why that is. Well, African Americans were first accepted into the Marines in 1942. That was following an executive order from Franklin Roosevelt that required the military and defense industries to accept workers and draftees of all races. And so in 1942, the Marines started accepting African American draftees, but they maintained a segregated training facility for them. So all of the other inductees went to, came to San Diego or went to Paris Island in South Carolina, but African Americans went to a place called Monford Point, which was a satellite camp of Camp Lejeune in coastal North Carolina. And so I spoke with one of those men uh, late last week, and his name is Carol Rivas. He's 91 and was drafted in 1943. And here's what he had to say about what Monford Point was like. It was a dirty place. It was a place that nobody wanted to really want to be, but that was all we had, and that was a place for Negroes at the time, especially in the Marine Corps. It was a lot of mud, and a lot of snakes, and a lot of other things that you didn't want. How is the school district working with these Marines? There is a program in the school district called Project Ujima, and it's a family engagement program that works primarily with the district's African American families in Southeast San Diego, and so. The uh, woman who runs this project, Elnita Shannon, got a grant from Cal Humanities, a $10,000 grant, to record these men's stories and also do um, some classes with families about the history of the Monfort Point Marines. Um, the families will also be writing a play based on you know, the interviews that they've been doing with these men. And she said that the project really aligns with what she sees Project Ujima being about, which is, you know, having a place for families to know that they can go or someone that they know that they can call to sort of get information and to be supported and to know that uh, they're not alone in facing any obstacles that they might face. And so here's what she said that they hope, that she hopes they're getting out of this project. We have to make sure that we continue our legacies. We have to teach our children about our legacy and our history. And I also want them to get out of it is that we are, you as a person, um, can endure more than you think you can. Is there any reason they're doing this right now? Well, just the, the fact that the Montfort Port Marines existed is sort of coming to light more in, the, in recent years. The surviving Marines were given the con uh, Congressional Gold Medals last year. Uh, the Marines are just starting to really talk about these men in their own sort of trainings and history. And so Elnita Shannon learned um, following that event where the men were given those uh, award those medals that some of these men lived right here in San Diego and as I was saying Carol Rivas is 91 the other men that they're talking to are in their late 80s so not only is it just sort of now is the time when people are starting to know more about these men and uh, learn about what they went through during the war and you know uh, Monfort Point existed until 1949 so through the 40s uh, that the opportunity to talk with them and learn about their experiences is, is really coming to an end. And uh, one, there's a group called the Monfort Point Marine Association. They have a chapter here in San Diego. And one of the men who's part of that group was saying that uh, this is something that people really haven't learned about up to this point, including people like him who are in the Marines. And that's William Woods. And here's what he had to say about that. I was in the Marine Corps and didn't even realize that we had Marines who were black serving in the South Pacific. And you know, you stop and think about it. They kept it hidden pretty well. They kept it hidden from me, and I was in the Marine Corps. And what did you hear from these families who did the interviews? They're just so excited. You know, they really feel like they're learning about something that not a lot of people know about. They have been, I was saying they were taking classes, so they've been learning about these men and their experiences for the last year or so. And, you know, they, I think they feel a lot of pride in 
playing a part in sort of bringing their stories to light. And I spoke with one of the fathers, Corwin Harris. He and his son are interviewing um, some of these men and some other retired Marines and um, active duty African American Marines. And he said, you know, it's been remarkable to hear about how much our country has changed since these men joined the Marine Corps, you know, 70 years ago. Um, but he said, you know, there is still there are still changes that need to be made, and he hopes that this project can play some small part in those changes that he'd like to see. You know, and and what are some of those changes that they'd like to see? Well, I think, you know, he's talking about sort of when we look at, you know, the reason Project Ujima exists is because there's an achievement gap in the school district. African American students have lower graduation rates. They have lower test scores. Um, they have lower college going rates. And so, you know, there may not be uh, the institutional, or there may not be, yeah, the institutionalized racism that existed when these men were sent to this entirely separate facility. But there continue to be these gaps that even though we, you know, have equal access to resources, the outcomes aren't the same for every group, and especially, you know, African American students in city schools. And so, um, you know, here's what he says, how he says he thinks this project can make a difference. The African American people, um, we're, 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 we are, we're so far behind, and it's because we don't know. We don't know our history. You know, the more that you know about yourself and where you come from, the more successful you'll be. And more people are about to find out about this. Kyla Calvert, thank you for coming on the program.